In this video, we're going to learn how to figure out the oxidation numbers for the different elements in a chemical compound. The oxidation numbers are the numbers that I've written here above each one of the elements. Now, if you want to learn more about what oxidation numbers are or why they're important, check out my video called What Are Oxidation Numbers? In this video, we're going to work through the process of how you figure out what these numbers are. So here are the rules that we're going to use to figure out oxidation numbers. Now just so you know, every teacher and textbook has their own version of these rules, but they all work in pretty much the same way. So if you learn mine, you'll still get the answer right 100% of the time, even if these are a little bit different from your teachers. I'm going to talk through a few of these rules right now, and then I'll introduce the rest just as we work through practice problems. The first is this. An element by itself always has an oxidation number of zero. Here's what I mean by that. There are a lot of chemical compounds that have just one element. That element is not combined with any other elements. That's what I'm calling an element by itself. So that's something like Cl2. It doesn't matter how many atoms of that element you have, just as long as it's only that element and none others. So Cl2, an element by itself, oxidation number of zero. Sodium, Na, by itself, zero. S6, just sulfur, nothing else. P4, phosphorus, and nothing else, zero. So that's probably the easiest rule here. It's always zero for the oxidation state if you have an element by itself with nothing else. The other rule here is about monatomic ions. These are ions that are made of only one atom. So like this. For monatomic ions, their oxidation number is the same as their ion charge. So for K plus here, its oxidation number is going to be plus one. For N3 minus, it'll have an oxidation number of minus three. And Mg2 plus here is going to have an oxidation number of plus two. Now keep this in mind, when we write oxidation numbers, we write the, the sign first, so plus, minus, and then the number after. This is the opposite of how we write ionic charges, so just keep that in mind. The charge might be two plus on magnesium, but the oxidation number is plus two. Now for the rest of these rules, we usually use more than one together. So I'll just talk about these as we use them in example problems. Here is our first example. KCl, we want to figure out the oxidation numbers of the elements in this compound. Okay, so let's take a look at our rules here. K, potassium, is in this column in the periodic table. It's in group 1A. So there's this rule. The elements in group 1A are always plus one. So that is potassium's oxidation number. Then we have Cl over here. That is one of the halogens. Halogens, usually minus one, positive with oxygen. Well, Cl certainly isn't with oxygen here, so we'll give it a minus one oxidation number. Now, I want to use this to show you a third rule. That's this rule right here. The sum of oxidation numbers for a neutral compound equals zero. KCl is a neutral compound here. It doesn't have a charge after it. So that means that the sum of these oxidation numbers is going to equal zero. And that's definitely true here. Plus one minus one equals zero. We'll use this later on when we do other examples, but just keep that in mind. The sum of oxidation numbers for a neutral compound should always equal zero. MgO. Mg is in this column in the periodic table, group 2A, and group 2A elements are always plus two. So there's that. Oxygen here, we have a rule for oxygen. It is usually minus two. It is minus one in peroxide. H2O2 hydrogen peroxide is the most common peroxide. It's probably the only one you'll ever see. But anyway, this oxygen is definitely not in hydrogen peroxide. So it's fair to say that its oxidation number will be minus two. Plus two for Mg, minus two for O, and they add together to make zero because this is a neutral compound. CO, carbon monoxide. Let's figure this one out. Okay, so C here, there isn't any rule for carbon. 
So we'll have to figure it out based on what we do know. Okay, so we do know oxygen. Oxygen is usually minus two, unless we're in a peroxide, definitely not a peroxide. So we can safely say that oxygen's oxidation number is minus two. Now, let's use this other piece of information that we know, and that's the sum of oxidation numbers for a neutral compound should equal zero. So whatever carbon's oxidation number is, should add together with oxygen's to make zero. So we can figure out that carbon's oxidation number should be plus two. Minus two from oxygen gives us zero. NH3, okay. N, there isn't any information about that. So just like in the last example, we'll have to figure out its oxidation number using what we do know. Here we've got hydrogen. There's a rule for hydrogen. Hydrogen is plus one with nonmetals and minus one with metals. So nitrogen is definitely a nonmetal which means that in this case, hydrogen is going to have a plus one oxidation number, okay? But there are three hydrogens. Each one of them has a plus one. So what we have to do is we have to multiply this plus one times three for the three hydrogens, and that's gonna give us plus three. Now. Let's keep this rule in mind, that the sum of oxidation numbers for a neutral compound should equal zero. NH3 is definitely a neutral compound. We don't see any charge here. So whatever nitrogen's number here is, needs to add together with plus three to make zero. So that means that nitrogen here has to be minus three. That adds there to get zero. So its oxidation number is minus three. Hydrogen's is plus one. CaC2. So calcium here is in this column, group 2A, so we know that its number is always plus two. We don't know what carbon's number is, but we can figure it out. What we do know is that calcium's number plus whatever carbon's number is needs to equal zero because this is a neutral compound. It doesn't have a charge. That means that the total number on carbon is going to be negative two but there are two carbons here. So we have to divide this number between the two of them. So we're gonna take this and divide it by two to get an oxidation number of minus one for each one, plus two for calcium, minus one for carbon. NO2 one minus, check this out, it is an ion. So this is gonna be a little bit different. In this case, the sum of oxidation numbers for a polyatomic ion equals the ion charge. So let's see how we'll use that here. Nitrogen, we don't know what its oxidation number is gonna be, but oxygen here is usually minus two. So we have minus two here, but we have two oxygens. So we're gonna do minus two times two is gonna give us minus four altogether. Now, whatever nitrogens is, when we combine it with minus four, we need to get not zero, but we need to get minus one because that's what the ion charge of NO2 one minus is. So this means that we will have uh, three plus three plus three minus four gives us minus one, which means that the oxidation number here on nitrogen is going to be plus three. HNO3. Okay, let's take a look at the rules. We got hydrogen. Hydrogen here is combined with nonmetals, nitrogen and oxygen, so that means that its oxidation number is going to be plus one. Oxygen over here is gonna be minus two, but we have three oxygens. So we gotta take this minus two times three to get minus six. Okay, so now we have plus one from the hydrogen, plus whatever nitrogen is, minus six has got to give us zero because this is a neutral compound here. So that means that in this case, nitrogen's oxidation number will be plus five. One plus five minus six equals zero. Now I'm gonna start talking about some more challenging examples that use some rules here that are a little less common. ZnH2, okay. Zinc here, we don't know what its charge will be, but hydrogen, we have a rule for that. 
Now we have been used to hydrogen's number being plus one because it's been with non-metals. But here it's with a metal, with zinc. So that means that its oxidation number is going to be minus one. But we have two of these hydrogens, so it's gonna be minus one times two give us minus two. Since this is a neutral compound, whatever zinc is, plus minus two has to give us zero. So that means that zinc's oxidation number must be plus two here. So we got plus two for zinc and minus one for hydrogen because the hydrogen was with metal, so it has a minus one oxidation number. BrO3, one minus. This is a tricky one, but it's pretty common. So Br, bromine, is one of the halogens. The rule for the halogens is they are usually minus one, but they are positive with oxygen. So I'm not going to put one minus in here because it's with oxygen. So let's go to oxygen instead. Oxygen is usually minus two since it's not in peroxide. So let me put that here, minus two. Now we have three oxygens, so that's going to be times three to give us minus six. Now, whatever bromine is, minus six has got to give us minus one, because this whole thing is a polyatomic ion that has a charge of minus one. So that means that bromine's charge must be plus five. Plus five minus six gives us minus one. So this is an exception where the halogens, instead of having an oxidation number of minus one, have a positive oxidation number because they're paired up with oxygen. Keep that in mind. ClF3. Okay, so here we have two halogens in the same compound. We have fluorine and chlorine. How are we gonna figure this out? Well, this is one of these things that sometimes happens where fluorine combines with another one of the halogens. We're gonna zero in on this rule first, that fluorine is always, always, always minus one. So I'm gonna put a minus one right there, multiply it by three because I have three of them, and get minus three. Now chlorine, the other halogen, says that these other halogens are usually minus one, but not always. They can be positive with oxygen, they can also be positive with fluorine here. So, fluorine gives us minus three, chlorine must be plus three, so that these can add together to give us zero, since this is a neutral compound, which means that chlorine's oxidation number must be plus three. And it's plus three instead of minus one, because it's paired with fluorine, which is always, always, always minus one, no matter what. So, that's how to work through these rules to figure out what the oxidation numbers of elements are in a compound. If you want a little bit more practice, I'm gonna have another video with more practice problems. If you just are a little bit shaky on this, doing more and more practice problems is the best way to get good really fast.